Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us for this conversation with a caregiver. We're in the cardiac intensive care unit and I am here today with Christina Spencer and her beautiful son Memphis. And Christina has kindly offered to share what it's like to be a caregiver of a child who has a complex medical condition. So Christina, I just want to turn this over to you. If you can please share a little bit about yourself, your son, your daughter, your husband, your family, and your experience. Hi, I'm Christina Spencer, and this is my little man, Memphis. And uh, Memphis will be eight months old on Sunday, so in two days. Um, he has never been home. He was born at 31 weeks abruptly um, after I developed preeclampsia and um, we also have a two-year-old at home my so it's my husband and I and our two-year-old and then this little man um, and it's definitely been a challenge um, adjusting to life in the hospital while having a toddler at home that you have to maintain some kind of normalcy for um, but I feel like you know you you learn how to make it work and um, it's never quite easy, but it's not always as difficult as it is um, in the beginning. And, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs, but um, it's doable, even if not ideal. Would you mind sharing a bit about Memphis's current condition? How sure. is he doing? Um, so it's been a long road for us. Um, Memphis has had several issues. Um, first and foremost, he's premature. Um, so his biggest issue is chronic lung disease. He was intubated for the first 18 weeks of his life. And um, at one point when he was about just shy of four months old, he got a tracheostomy um, and also a G-tube. So he, his ventilator support is now given through um, an open airway through a trach in his neck. Um, which also means that we can't hear him cry and when he's ready to say his first words um, while he's ventilated um, we won't be able to hear those either so I think that was the hardest part about getting used to that situation um, but it's reversible um, so it doesn't have to be permanent and the only thing that can really help his lungs is helping him to grow and develop healthier lung tissue, um, which children do for the first several years of their life. So um, there's a chance that he'll be able to grow out of this and possibly not need the trach anymore. Um, and so, you know, we look forward to seeing those kinds of developments. Um, the reason he's in the cardiac ICU is because he, it was discovered at eight weeks old when we transferred um, here from a community hospital um, that he has a large hole in his heart, um, what they call a VSD. And he also had a smaller hole, which uh, they call an ASD, and his PDA valve was open. They were able to close his PDA valve with a medication similar to ibuprofen. Um, that thankfully worked and so he didn't need to have that done in surgery as well um, But his VSD closure was an open-heart uh, Procedure and that was done when he was about two and a half months old um, in the middle of June and He came through that really well and they were able to patch um, they took part of I forget where they where they took the patch from but they take part of um something else and put it um, over the hole in his heart and so he has a residual hole um, so that the pressures aren't too off but um, that that was his cardiac issue uh, shortly after his surgeries he developed um, arrhythmias which were at one point fatal and did cause him to code and need um, need CPR and you know life-saving interventions um, but he came back from that and his arrhythmias it took a while to figure out how to 
manage them medically, but they are medically managed now. Um, he remains in the cardiac ICU because he has pulmonary hypertension, which is high blood pressure in your lungs. Um, and so because of that, um, he would remain a cardiac patient, um, mm -hmm. even though his lungs are what we're working on and they're used to dealing with that more so in the NICU than they are um, in the cardiac world. So right now it's kind of a waiting game. He's more stable and we're just kind of um, waiting for that healthier lung tissue to develop um, so that he can get these vent settings weaned down and get off of some of the sedation medications that he's on um, to get him home. And do you mind sharing a bit about what your whole family's experience has been as I can only imagine how challenging with one at home and all that little Memphis has been through and you all have been through. Can you share a bit? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, it's been, that's been one of the most difficult parts about all of this is maintaining normalcy for a two-year-old who, you know, typically if they're out of routine, um, a two-year-old acts up anyway, but anything out of the norm for a two-year-old can be very hectic um, to your life in general. And so for her, we have kept things as consistent as possible. Um, I have not returned to work yet, but her daycare situation remains. Um, we're very fortunate to have a lot of family support. And when I was working, um, she would go to my parents and my mother-in-law, depending on what day of the week it was. Um, so she's with family all week and we just maintain that same schedule mm -hmm. for her. Um, you know, it's a bit more flexible now. Sometimes I'm a little later at the hospital or even though we're only 10 miles from home, um, it can sometimes take up to two and a half hours to get there depending on what time mm -hmm. I leave. So, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of um, just trying to keep things consistent for her sake at home. Mm -hmm. um, some parents make the decision to swap off and spend nights here. Um, there have been occasions where we have spent nights after major procedures and things, but um, I just feel like for her, it's more important that we're at home. Um, so there's a lot of mommy guilt that comes along with, with having one kid in the hospital and one kid at home. Um, but we chalk it up to she knows the difference and he, um, not that he doesn't know the difference, but for the most part, um, he's not in a position where we're holding him all the time or where we can hold him all the time and you know coddle him and, and things like that so um, as far as that's concerned um, we have a very good relationship with the nurses and they talk to him um, and keep him very good company so mm -hmm. we know that he's in good hands and we call and check in often mm -hmm. do you mind sharing on the stress and how do you deal with that and what tips, if any, you have for other families? Um, I, I think because I'm a second time parent, I learned really hard the first time with my daughter because she was also a preemie. Um, and her NICU stay was pretty traumatic for me, even though she wasn't a sick baby. Uh, she was just very small um, and needed to grow, um, but it was still very hard not being able to hold her from the beginning and you know take her home when I was discharged and um, I feel like if you can overcome um, those milestones that you feel like you miss out on uh, that you can create milestones of your own um, that don't apply to other babies who do have more normal births um, and you know you look forward to celebrating things like small weans on the ventilator, coming off of a uh, medication that he's been on for a long time. Um, the fact that he's had a stable day some days are, is just enough to make us feel good. Um, but putting yourself first, um, you know, regardless of if you have a medically complex child or just, um, or, you know, a, a newborn or a toddler or, you know, other child in general, 
um, really coming to terms with the fact that you have to put yourself first and take care of yourself in order to be an efficient person um, in general who is capable of giving your children um, the attention that they need is really important. So um, I cannot stress self-care enough and I'm still very guilty of neglecting myself oftentimes. Um, but you know, I it, it's come to a point where if I'm being brutally honest, the cabinet in the back of our room here is full of um, toothpaste and toothbrushes and hairbrushes and deodorant because sometimes you just leave the house and you forget that you didn't shower. Um, so, you know, there's showers here, which is great because then that means I'm at the hospital and I've made it out here through traffic and as soon as I take a breath and realize I'm here, he's here, he's good, I can go get a cup of coffee and I can take a shower and I can come back in here and just relax and stare at him while he's sleeping and you know that's you know whatever else is therapeutic um to a parent who's going through the motions of their child in the hospital thank you christine yeah um, absolutely for sharing. Sure. And, um, we are sending you all so many very best wishes with lots of hope and positive thinking thank and you love. Okay.